we're exactly where we need to be, right? I feel like that we have um, the staff and the support and the community to be resilient every day. Fauna Center is definitely what it consider a family. Ward 7 is home. For me, there's no other place like it. So I was working in the city of Baltimore and doing resilience hubs there and had started working with the Urban Sustainability Directors Network as well, doing resilience hubs all over the country. And Department of Energy and Environment came to me and was like, we'd really love for you to come and meet with this group in Ward 7. And so I was invited to come as a presenter. And when I got here, it was amazing to meet with all the residents of the community and to build these relationships. And so I've been invited back a few times to guide and support on what is a resilience hub? What does it look like? And not just for community, actually for the city government folks who needed to learn a little bit that these are not supposed to be government led and managed. They're actually for the community and led and managed by the community. In those early days, we needed to learn more and have exposure to how other cities were addressing resilience and what it meant to them in that context. And then we wanted to discuss what are our realities here in this community. We had to go home and read and do our homework and research and dig deep to understand that information and then synthesize it so that we could come back and say, listen, as we evolve in our understanding, I think this building and this, sit, this site will continue to evolve. So I'm often asked, what is a resilience hub? What does it look like? And I think there are no two resilience hubs that are alike. What is really special about this site is we are talking about a neighborhood where people have been here generation after generation and invested in this space and love it. And they love it so much that they bring that into wanting to direct what happens. They want to bring it into what their kids' programs look like, what they have access to. Uh, it's so community driven and so community owned and managed that it's beautiful to see how people step up, take the management and ownership and say, this is what we want. And we want you to listen to us. We want you to hear us. And that's what's beautiful is the partners have actually stepped back and been able to do so. So the FH Fontroy Community Enrichment Center uh, was actually established as a community benefits agreement to serve the residents that live above the building, 100% um, affordable housing, and the immediate community around. When it was selected to become DC's first pilot resilience hub in 2019, now the organization needed to transform, expand its services, transition into becoming the various aspects of what a resilience hub needs to be. So the center did a very good job with youth programming and senior programming and building the trust of the community. When we were selected as a resilience hub, the community was very clear about the gaps and how the resilience hub needed to serve the community. So you're becoming a resilience hub, you're building the airplane as it's flying. It's flying with programming, but you have an airplane that's not completely ready. We were in a 2,000 square foot space that served very small programming. And we now have the opportunity to expand the footprint by 4,000 square foot. And in that expansion of 4,000 square feet, we will now become a total of 6,000 square feet where we can address programming related to communications. We're going to be putting in place a broadcasting studio. We will have a training center specifically for behind the computer career pathways training. We are also going to be expanding and creating a commercial kitchen. We have the space to do that now. We are also going to have a maker space and we're also going to expand our community gathering spaces. Now, fortunately for us, across the street is one of the largest urban gardens, the Letterer Gardens. And the Letterer Gardens is a fantastic community gathering space. And they are looking forward to a moment where we can collaborate on nutrition literacy programming. 
As we enhanced our physical spaces and programming, we learned about the other three foundational areas, such as communications, operations and maintenance, and power systems. And so we started to focus on those areas as well. Partnering with the Fonterey Resilience Hub has been incredible. They have such amazing services and programs that were already happening, and the building and the surrounding landscape were already really set up well for them to become a Resilience Hub. What we needed to do is actually look at some of the bigger pieces that were missing. And in the communication space, it was really important to start looking at, did people know what was happening at the site? How could they come in and get engaged? What were ways that they started to feel safe in the site? So it was really exciting to be able to start doing programs and offering additional services like yoga or uh, training for kids on computers, or even just getting people to understand that there's a phone tree that we can start to activate at the site to use to be in proactive communication. So there was the piece of bringing people in, but there's also this opportunity of having people go out and be able to actually get to know their neighbors proactively, that CERT level 11. So we've had this amazing opportunity to work with Dennis and others to go out and get to know their neighbors, talk to them about the Resilience Hub, tell them what was happening there, and also to invite them to come there so that they could start to build up their relationship with the site and also start to build up relationships with each other. So that in an event of a disruption, they would already know it was a safe place to go, that they would have access to the resources that they needed and that they would be able to be there and supported throughout recovery. As they were improving the communications of the site, they also started working on the operations and maintenance of the site. And the maintenance was looking at different tweaks and retrofits that had to happen so that people could access the site better, coming up with different things related to ADA accessibility and all kinds of things. But we also then started looking at the operations and how the site was going to operate. And so it was fantastic to actually be able to um, bring in USDN models of an operations manual, then to be able to bring in Department of Energy and Environment and the Fonterey Center and to collectively work together with other partners to identify how the operations manual will work when we're in everyday mode. And then also, because we were in the middle of COVID during this time, how it was going to work for both a short-term disruption and a long-term disruption like COVID. And then how it supports throughout recovery. What does the site do to adjust and change? We're now working with them to build out their resilient power system. And this takes a pretty long time. So we've been working on the power system for quite a while. We've been working with our partners, Clean Energy Group and American Microgrid Solutions, looking at a solar array and then also thinking of a battery backup system. These systems are really going to help during any sort of extreme weather event where we lose power or have a massive blackout. And it's just an opportunity for community members to be able to charge their cell phones, to be able to come to a space where there's heating and cooling, air filtration um, that can continue to work at a site, and just for people to know that there's a reliable source of power in any type of disruption. One of the most important things when building a Resilience Hub is to make sure you're addressing all five foundational areas. And so that's making sure that we don't focus on one thing and leave out the others. And that's what's been beautiful about working with Fonterey Center is they're really working to address all five foundational areas and then thinking about those foundational areas in each of the three resilience modes so that they're looking to meet community needs year round and comprehensively, not centering the disaster, but instead centering the humans and the people that live in their community. So we get selected as a resilience hub in 2019. And I don't know if you remember, but when COVID hit, couldn't find face masks. And if you did, there were $20 a pop. And so what we did was ask a funder who was going to fund something else and said, can we use that money to support becoming literally a face mask making factory for the community? We made 7,000 face masks. We distributed them mostly to seniors and to the youth. And we also became a distribution center for perishable and non-perishable foods. And we were able to engage United Medical Center mobile unit to come every week to do medical screening. When testing was available for COVID, they did COVID testing. Where vaccines were available, they did um, COVID vaccines. And so we were able to respond in a very impactful and meaningful way when COVID hit. And this gave us so much insight in terms of how we really needed to think about our programming in steady state, but also in disruption. You'd be surprised how many people walk up and says, what, what's going on in there? And now they know. They know that there's art there, there's children's programming there, there's classes, there's CERT training. 
There's all these events that weren't happening five years ago that are happening now at this space, and it's only going to get better. As a resilience hub, the other thing that we are is a safe space. We cannot be a successful resilience hub if our tentacles do not go far and deep into the community. This building was a buzz during COVID, and the attention to the community members who were overlooked and its response in real time to the needs because we, were, we needed masks. Our young people, our seniors, we needed masks. This room, this building, when it came out to the rollout of response and readiness during a crisis, this place was moving. So what is the first step if you're interested in creating a resilience hub? I would highly recommend going to resilience-hub.org and taking a look at the guidance document. The guidance document provides step-by-step -step instructions for how to start setting up a Resilience Hub in your community. I also would reach out to your community members and community-based partners to ensure that they actually want to set up a Resilience Hub and make sure that there's passion and desire for the project before getting started. You're also welcome to reach out to the Urban Sustainability Directors Network to get more information or to get involved.